In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a modern application in Python using custom TK Inter. And if you are familiar with TK Inter, it's going to be a breeze because this is essentially just an add on for TK Inter, which allows us to make our UI look a lot better with nearly no effort. And since this will be our first application, we're going to create an increment counter. It's going to be simple as this. And every time we tap on it, it's going to increment the count by one and we can reset it at any moment. So this reset button is going to appear as soon as we increment the number. And of course, if there's nothing to reset, the reset button is going to disappear. So we can increment it again and we can reset it. And as you can see, we have this very nice UI and this is going to be the starting point for building applications in Python. Later on, on this channel, I will create some more complex examples. So if you end up enjoying this video, do remember to leave a like and possibly even subscribe if you're curious about creating more applications such as this one. So let's start with a brand new project in Python. I'm using Python 3.11 for this in PyCharm. And the first thing we want to do is install the custom TK Inter package. So here we'll type in pip install custom tk inter. And I already have it installed, so it's not going to say anything there, but you have to do that for this to work. Now I will make the font size much bigger so we can see what's going on. And the first thing we need to do is import custom tk inter as ctk. And then we can create our class, which is just going to be the application itself. And here is where we're going to create the GUI for our application. Now, first we need to create an initializer and inside the initializer, we need to create what they call the master, which is the app itself. And it's going to be of type ctk dot ctk. Next, we need to define the master. So self dot master is going to equal the master that we insert and we need to say self.master.geometry and this is going to be the window frame. So here we're going to type in 250 pixels by 200 pixels. Self.master and we're going to set resizable to false for both the width and the height. We don't want the user to make it smaller and we don't want the user to make it bigger. We just want it to be a set, a set frame. And finally, we want to give this a title. So master.wm title and here you can give your window a title and I'll just call it increment counter. So that takes care of the first part of our application of actually creating the window and we can actually test it right now. We don't have to wait or do anything funky. We can just create it immediately. We can say that the app is going to equal ctk.ctk .ctk, and we need to initialize that and we want to create the GUI which is going to equal the app with the initializer that takes the master. So the master is going to be the app itself. And we need to just run that application in a main loop. So that will keep the program alive. And if we run this, it's going to create an empty window for us with nothing inside it. And of course, we need to place in the elements of our choice, such as the buttons and the text that we are going to increment. So this shows that our program does run and that everything's set up correctly. We have a frame that we've created that has the title of increment counter. So next let's create a variable called counter and it's going to be of type string and it's going to be set to zero. And I'm just using a string of numbers because when you display text in TK inter, it has to be a string. So I'll show you later how we will implement this and how we will increment it. It's a personal decision. You can do it, of course, with an integer and convert it later. But I just want the counter to be treated as a string. And we can even add a comment there that creates the counter as a string. Next, we need to create a label. And a label is going to contain the text that we're going to update. So self.label is going to equal ctk dot ctk label. And if you were using tk inter, for example, you can just remove the C and you can remove this part here and it would look like that. So the translation is quite literal. Now, the first thing we need to pass in is the master. So self.master and the text is going to equal self.counter. If this was an integer, we would have to type convert it here to a string to make sure that it actually is accepted as an argument. 
then I want this to be quite big. So we're going to provide a font and the font is going to contain Helvetica bold and it's going to have a font size of 26. And this scribbly line wants me to type in Helvetica because that is the correct font. Then we need to place this label. So self.label.place. And we need to decide where we want this to actually appear in the frame. So we're going to type in first relative X because we want this all to be relative and we're going to put 0 0.5. So it's placed directly in the center of the frame. And we're also going to type in relative Y, which is going to be 0 0.4. So it's right above the middle of the center of the frame. And it's going to have an anchor, which is going to be set to center. And every time you create some sort of element, I do recommend that you run the program just to see that it is updating in your application. Now we have this zero here and we want to be able to update it, of course, but we still need to create that functionality. I might actually make this font a bit smaller so we can fit everything on one line. So that's going to be like that. Next, we want to create the button, the button that actually increments the counter. So here we'll type in self.button and that's going to equal ctk.ctk button. And we're going to pass in the master followed by the text, which is going to say increment. And we're going to give it a command and it's going to be called self.increment. So let's create it right below. And we do need to go out one layer because this will not be part of the initializer. This is a function that belongs to our class. So here we'll type in def increment and it should have that self word and we're not going to do anything with it just yet. So I'm going to insert an ellipsis as a placeholder. And we should actually do the same thing for the reset button. We're going to have two methods. One's going to reset the counter and one's going to increment the counter. So it's good to have these two placeholders. But now the command does not give us an error and and it's important you do not add the parentheses to the method, otherwise it will not work. Now the last thing to do here is to add a corner radius of 20. And then we will place this button. So self.button.place and we can actually copy this section here and all we need to change is the relative y. So we're going to place it at 60% down. And if we run this one more time, you'll now notice that we will have an increment button right below the counter and we can tap on it, but nothing's going to happen because we've not given this any functionality. And right below the button, we're going to create a reset button. So reset button, and that's going to be of type ctk dot ctk button, or it's going to be of type none because here we're just creating that variable to show the program that it exists and it's going to be initially set to none. So now we have an optional here, so we don't have to create that button, but we do have a reference to it. And once again, all of these components are being created inside the initializer. So make sure that you have the methods outside of that because these methods do not belong inside there. Now, first we're going to take care of the increment functionality. So here we'll type in try and I'm going to type in self.counter is going to equal the string of the integer of self.counter plus one. And this can be seen as a confusing implementation. So you're more than welcome just to keep the counter as an integer and to just convert it later. So for example, if you have an integer that you have to insert here, you can just convert it directly. Uh, not right here, but where it says increment, where's that? Oh, here. So you can just go here and convert this to a string directly if you want to keep this as an integer. To avoid that, I'm doing this silly mess over here, but it's what I decided to do for this video. Next, we need to call self.label.configure. And what we want to configure is the text. So here we'll type in self.counter. And as you can see, by making sure that we keep this as a string, it does make it easier to insert it around the program, but it is quite counterintuitive but it is quite counterintuitive that a number would end up being a string. Now we need to also add some logic for when the reset button should appear. So here we'll type in if the integer of self.counter is equal to one, that means that the user has incremented the button and that we should make the reset button appear. 
So we're going to create a reset button here. We'll type in self dot reset button, which already exists because we've created a reference to it. And that's going to equal ctk dot ctk button. And we need to pass in self dot master followed by the text, which will be set to reset. And below that we'll type in command, which is going to take the reset command. So self dot reset without the parentheses. And we're going to have to give this a corner radius of 20, a foreground caller of red, a hover caller of dark red. And that's all we have to include for this button. Now below the button, we need to type in self dot reset button dot place. And we need to choose where we want to place this. And we're going to type in relative X and set that to 0 0.5 because that's perfectly in the center. And we want relative Y to be 0 0.8 with the anchor set to the center. So you should notice that with relative Y, we're going up in increments of 0.2. So that's about 20% apart. And before we can test this out and run it, we do need to add the accept block just in case an error is thrown. So here we'll type in accept exception as E. And we're just going to print the error in case there is one as E. Now we're still missing the reset functionality, of course, but we have a lot of functionality already. And let's just test that the reset button actually does appear when we are counting. So if we run this program, we have our increment counter here. And if we tap on it, everything is working nicely besides the reset button, which has no functionality whatsoever. So let's go back to our application and let's finish with the reset functionality. So here we'll type in try and we're going to try to set the self counter to zero as a string and then self dot label dot configure. And we want to make sure that the text is equal to self dot counter. And we also want to destroy the reset button. So self dot reset button dot destroy. And if anything goes wrong, we will use the same exception right below it. So accept exception as E, if something goes wrong, we'll find out what it is. And that will take care of the remaining functionality. So just to recap, we first created a class of application, then we created an initializer, which created the window for our application. Then we created a counter to keep track of that count as we are updating the text. Then we needed to create a label, which will actually display the counter, which is the text itself. After that, we created the main button, which increments the counter each time we tap on it. And we created a reference to the reset button that we could use later on in our methods. Then we created this increment method, which increments the first counter. And if the counter is equal to one, it is going to create the reset button. Otherwise, it will throw an error. Once there is a reset button, we can try to set it to zero and we can configure that to display zero. And then we're going to destroy that reset button. So it disappears from the screen. Otherwise we will throw an exception. So putting that all together and calling that all down here will result in this application that allows us to increment and reset the counter as we wish. And as you can see, the button disappears quite nicely. But with that being said, we've successfully created our very first modern application in Python using custom TK Inter. Do let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions, tips, advice, or just anything that has to do with this video. I'm more than happy to read through the comments and get some inspiration. But otherwise, we are going to be creating many of these applications. So if you have any suggestions, do remember to leave that in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.